Thank you so much, uh, Anthony. And certainly introducing the uh, comparative uh, perspective is all, always healthy. I mean, uh, talking about other cases in other places as Scotland and uh, Quebec, for, uh, for example. Uh, the, the next speaker is Erika Casajoana, probably? Casajoana. Oh, sorry for mispronouncing your <laughs> last name earlier uh, uh, this morning, so the microphone is yours. Where is the presentation? And to go to the next one, just uh, here. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Shalom. Bon dia. Um, thanks for uh, having us. I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, with you today, especially as my uh, first time in Israel. I, I'm very grateful for the previous speakers because uh, I think uh, my intervention will complement what they've already said and, and uh, it uh, makes it much easier for me. I don't need to repeat many things. Um, in my presentation, I will basically make two points. First of all, the title of this conference should be the future of Spain rather than the future of Catalonia. We should be worried about the future of Spain. The future of Catalonia is bright and will do very well, will be fine, thanks very much. We have an open, democratic, very civic society with a strong economy and strong values. And our future, if we are not repressed, will be wonderful. The future of Spain is much more uh, somber and full of uh, risks, and I'm going to try to um, explain them to you. My second point is that the European Union, with, with its uh, a very cold response to the democratic aspirations of Catalonia, has for the time being decided to place its bet with Madrid, for the time being. This decision could change. And in Madrid, they should be worried because they haven't received a blank check from Brussels. They are on standby. If the repression continues, if the democratic straying from the national authorities continues, they will get bad news from Brussels they would not like. So my point is Europe is for the time being with uh, Spain and uh, Spain uh, democratic system is in grave danger with the potential to destabilize the whole of Europe. Oh. Um, first of all, we have a long history um, of very... Can you see it or I... Yeah. do I, I need to move or... If yeah. you'd like to see what's on the screen, yes. It's a bit low. <laughs> Mr. Castells and, and um, Ms. Uh, Martí made the point of the application of article, the implementation of Article 155 to Catalonia. We have a very long history, and Madrid has embarked on a very dangerous path, suppressing extremely ancient institutions. The humiliation of Catalans because of the application of 155 is so deep, they are not even aware of it. The Catalan Parliament stems from the 13th century and the Catalan government from the 14th century. And right now, they are suppressed, as even in previous times in history during dictatorships. So it is a, a, a time bomb. It's a tsunami. I hope that in, on December 21st, they start to get the first message from the Catalan people of how deep our humiliation and indignation is. Where is Europe when we need it? On November 2nd, half of the legitimate Catalan government was in prison. The other half has fled to Belgium. They are my neighbors now. I'm a political consultant in Brussels. They are my neighbors. We have one of the most famous exiles in the world, Mr. Carlos Puigdemont and some of his uh, government members. Uh, some of you have told me you have messages for him. I'll be glad to, to pass them on. On November 2nd, thousands of Catalans gathered in, in squares in front of the Catalan parliament and they were shouting, on is Europa, where is Europe? Where is Europe when we need it? Um, Europe is there. We, we don't see it. We are very annoyed by some of the statements by commission, commissioners. 
but Europe is there. The repression we would suffer, Catalans, without the, the protection of the rule of law, the, the fact that Europe is a club of uh, democratic states, would be much worse. We would risk becoming the Kurds and Mr. Rajoy a little Erdogan in Western Europe. So despite our disappointment with the lukewarm response from Brussels, we are still very grateful that Spain and with it Catalonia belongs to the European Union. The European Union, why is it betting for Spain? For many reasons, many reasons. Mr. Juncker said it the other day, we don't want 98 states in Europe. It's funny that a Luxembourger, a country with half a million inhabitants, should say that. And the obvious response to that is, um, you always talk about Europe of the citizens, uh, the values, the democracy. The European institutions should respond to citizens' needs and citizens' democratic preferences, not the other way around. Not the other way around. Of course it would be complicated if Europe had many more nations uh, that are full members. But we'll adapt, as Europe has always done. And maybe this, this uh, um, uh, architecture of a club of states should be revised. Why not? Uh, they've adapted to Brexit, they've adapted to many things. Maybe they should uh, adapt to this. Europe is uh, trying very hard to look the other way, while Catalonia suffers uh, the worst repression in. Uh, under a so-called democracy that the European Union has ever seen, because they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Um, they don't want many states, and as a uh, states club, they help one another. Spain has a lot of power in Brussels, believe me. They have a commissioner, they have a certain number of votes at the European Council, and Catalonia has nothing. Catalonia has nothing. I know of many civil servants of Catalan origin who don't even dare come to the demonstrations in Brussels for the liberation of political prisoners because they feel the reprisals. Um, the tentacles of Spain are very, are very long and they use all of this with our tax money. They are paying the, the policemen repressing Catalans with our tax money and all the embassies in the world have an active Catalanophobic attitude with our money. Also, uh, the funding of, of these so-called civil society organizations for the unity of Spain, the, the famous uh, um, Catalan civil society. It is neither Catalan, nor civil, nor society. It, is, it comes all from, from state funding. Um, I, uh, I advise you very much not to believe anything the Madrid press publishes. We, the, the pro-independence forces have a huge problem with fake news, really. My, my, uh, my sadness is to see in European press some of these statements taken at face value. Um, after October 10th, when Mr. Puigdemont declared but not, not declared uh, independence, there was, um, on October 16th, the, the two civil society presidents were uh, imprisoned, the two Jordis, and there was a, a huge demonstration in Barcelona. I saw on, on, the, Spanish, on the European press a fake news uh, so-called survey published in El Periódico, a, a horrible unionist fake news outlet, where if you have one. Sadly, based in Barcelona, we also have fake pro-Spain uh, news from, from Barcelona, mostly from El Periódico, but not only. El Periódico survey said that two-thirds of Catalans, and I'm talking up right after October 16th and before October 27th when the Republic was uh, officially declared, it said that two-thirds of Catalans wanted elections and two-thirds did not want a declaration of independence. And I, I, I looked at it in disbelief, the Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung, Swiss media, um, news outlets, TV programs in Europe uh, believed it. It is fake. There's no way two-thirds of Catalans did not want the Declaration of Independence. We do have a majority for independence. I'm sorry to, to tell Mr. Castells. Otherwise, why, why doesn't Spain allow a referendum? If we are a minority, let's have a referendum. What, what, what are you afraid of? We are not afraid of, of the ballot boxes. Spain is. Spain is. And uh, our most famous political exile, Mr. Puigdemont, the other day at a conference in Brussels, 
publicly asked Mr. Juncker, Mr. Juncker, with whom are you standing? Who is truer to the idea of Europe? Catalans with their, with their um, votes, standing, facing violence, defending their ballot boxes, defending democracy, democratic values, a referendum. Who is truer to the idea of Europe? Those Catalans or the Spanish authorities sending the police to beat them up? Who, who, with whom will you stand, Mr. Juncker? And it's exactly that. We are uh, representing the, the true European values, and, and that's why I say that the future of Catalonia will be, will be great. Thanks very much. Let's continue. Um, support for, for Spain in Europe. It looks solid, but it isn't. It is very fragile. If Spain continues on this course of, uh, of violating democratic uh, principles on, and human rights, Europe will stop. I, uh, I uh, brought to you a cartoon uh, that exemplifies Europe's attitude. Instead of recognizing that democratic character of Catalonia's aspirations, they decide the simple solution to support Mr. Rajoy. You know, they will find sooner rather than later that Mariano is not the kind of man who fulfills promises. His voters know that already. He doesn't fulfill expectations either. And they should know better because he's been around for years and, uh, and the results are there. The European leaders have told for years to Mariano Rajoy, solve this politically, don't send in the judges, don't, don't persecute um, um, Catalan leaders. The former president of Catalonia, Mr. Artur Mas, has to pay five million in a bail to, the, to Spain and is inhabilitated. The repression does not come from now, it, it's been around for years, but the gravity of the repression has increased in the last month. Europe had, should see that these are the values associated with the pro-independence movement. Eh? And I already mentioned them earlier. Okay. <clears throat> what is the reality Europe has decided not to see for the time being? That Spain is violating Spanish, European and UN human rights legislation by violently chasing ballot boxes, by persecuting and imprisoning the pro-independence Catalan leaders and the Catalan government, and by usurping pro-independence Catalan institutions from its democratic representatives. There is no legal coverage for that. The Article 155, I recommend you to read it, is very vague, but its vagueness cannot be abused to suppress the rest of the Spanish legal system. The statute of autonomy is still valid. And nowhere on the statute of autonomy you have one of the reasons of, of, uh, of uh, dismissing the Catalan president is a decision by the uh, head of the Spanish government. Same thing with the Catalan parliament. Mr. Rajoy does not have the right to do any of this. And yet he did. Why? Because many parties in Spain, and I think it's a huge mistake by the socialists and ciutadans, are wrapped in the Spanish flag. Um, Isabel Elena said, it covers a lot of dirt in, in Spain because the Socialist Party has also uh, a lot of corruption cases in Andalusia, its stronghold. They are wrapped in the Spanish flag, they are afraid of losing votes in Spain, and they've decided to turn a blind eye on the, on the uh, very uh, egregious violations of uh, the uh, guarantees in the Spanish Constitution the European Charter of Human Rights and the UN Charter of Human, Human Rights. The future of Spain. Article 155 will be the political tombstone of Mr. Rajoy. That's why he didn't want to use it, because it's full of, of peril and traps. I already mentioned the humiliation suffered by Catalan citizens. By now, only Catalans and Basques and some online papers who are uh, um, protected from the, from the very strong uh, influence from the Spanish government, uh, freedom of the press in Spain would make for another conference altogether. We seem to be the only ones to have realized that the state of autonomy is dead. The Spanish constitution is dead. The, the pact that Mr. Castells uh, mentioned is dead. 
they flaunted it. They, they told us that this, this agreement by which the central government and the regions would share competences has been dynamited. They just took over. They usurped our institutions and sent our leaders to jail. It's over and will be felt very soon. Hmm? Let's wait and see what happens on December 21st. But some of the Partido Popular leaders are already saying that if we Catalans dare to vote wrongly, to choose the wrong government, they will apply 155 again. Um, I'll be happy to get questions and answers from you. And uh, thanks we, very much. We will do that later on. Yeah, yeah, later on. <laughs>